As some of you may be aware, the elemental charge blade is ridiculously powerful. You may have heard about how powerful it is. You may have heard people bragging about multi-thousand damage hits with their ultras. And I'm here to confirm that that is indeed possible. Now, how much damage can you squeeze out of these files? Is it 10,000? Is it 20,000? It's rarely that high. It's possible on certain matchups to hit for 1,500 per file times five. So you're looking at approximately 7,500 just from the files alone. Can you get higher than 1,500? There might be situations where you can, and there might be some very rare tricks that you can do to pull that off. We're not going to be talking about that. We're not Team Dark Side. We're not going to be putting little mods in the game to make it easier to see big numbers. Now, we are going to talk about how regular people who are in endgame can get big numbers consistently no matter what monster they're fighting. So we're going to keep it real. We're not going to role play today. This is all going to be 100% legit achievable by the average Joe. If I can do it, you can do it. So where do we start? Well, we're talking about element. So the trick here is to get your element as high as possible. Some weapons, the element damage is balanced with the raw damage. With ultra element playstyle for charge blade, we don't care about raw damage at all. So we're not going to boost our raw damage one bit. Not intentionally anyway. We're going to do everything in our power to jack up our element as high as possible. Why is that? Well, that's because the file damage multiplier is huge. So I can show you this in a spreadsheet. If you like spreadsheets, let me know in the comments if you'd rather I crunch the numbers in a spreadsheet, but I don't, I don't think we need to go into that much detail to get some practical information. Just suffice it to say that the multiplier for elemental damage on the ultra file explosions is enormous. It's like 12 or 13 or something like that. So if you can get your element up to say 200 with a 12 multiplier, you're going to be doing over 2000 damage. Now, of course that damage is going to be mitigated by the hit zone of the monster. And so you're not, you're not going to achieve that maximum number. You're going to have some multiplier that will shrink that down to something more realistic between a thousand and 1500. And not every monster is going to see thousand point file damage. Some monsters will be less than a thousand, but you're looking at five of them. So five times 800 is still in the thousands of points of damage per ultra. And so this is a highly effective play style against every monster in the game, especially when you hit the anomalies and you need to do lots of damage really fast in order to take them down. Cool thing about anomalies is their hit zones are much more favorable in certain states to elemental attacks. And so your numbers get even bigger when you get up into these high anomaly quests. So that's a, a wonderful benefit. So enough preamble. The goal here to play element ultra style is to jack up your element attack power as high as possible. So how do we do that? Step one, you need to get a charge blade with a ton of element on it. So let's take a look at what we have. Forge weapons, charge blade. We need two things. We need a ton of element attack and we need our file type to be element file. Okay, we don't want impact file on this. Okay, so 51 dragon attack power and element file. And in fact, this is the dragon charge blade that I choose to use. Is it the one with the highest dragon? No, it's not. But look at those slots. You're not going to beat those slots. And as you'll see later on, those slots actually allow you to add more element attack power very easily. So we'll get there. So you want to keep stepping down. Here's a fire 54 element file. That's a nice candidate. Impact, impact, 
fire 45 element. Here's an ice 48 element. So you see there are a lot of nice ones in here. 52 element. That one's impact. We'll skip that one. 58 an element. 35, that's impact. 66 an element file. Now look, it's got nice affinity too, right? We don't care about affinity. Affinity doesn't help us at all. So we're not even going to worry about affinity. And the attack power is lower than some of the other ones. That matters not a single bit to what we're building here. The element damage is going to overshadow the raw damage by a factor of 10 to 1. So approximately. So raw is meaningless for our purposes. Impact, no, nope, don't want that. Uh, no element. Impact, impact. We've got to skip all these. Impact, that's a water element, but that water is pretty low. 60 impact, nope. So our fire one is going to be the rock now, which I showed you before. Ice 71 an element. This is going to be your ice. That's got decent dragon, but the slots aren't there. Doesn't mean you can't use it. All right, here is your thunder. 75 thunder an element. Slots are terrible, but it's 75 thunder. That's insane. Here's an ice, but it's impact. Now, this dragon is also element, and it's more dragon than the primordial but the primordial slots are better and you get a nice bonus off the primordial which we'll talk about a little bit later and so i think we hit them all did we find the water here's our water option 57 water an element yeah you get to use the crazy fish one and there they are so you pick the elements you want to build for make your weapon Step two, since we're in endgame, now this you don't have to be in endgame for this to work, okay? Everything that I'm telling you will work throughout the game as you progress. But I'm gonna, since I'm in endgame, and since there are so many cool tricks you can do in endgame, as these tricks open up to you, you can start to incorporate them into your build. So when you get your uh, curious weapon crafting, curious, curious weapon crafting, you want to augment this thing with maxed out element level eight element you want to get your anomaly slots all unlocked you want to get your elemental boost up to level eight i had extra slots so i just put in more attack boost like there's nothing else you can do there so get your elemental this is the most important thing so what you're seeing is an extra 53 dragon element attack power from the curious augments alone that's insane now you get attack and you get sharpness but those two things are also irrelevant to this build something i really like about this i don't have to manage all these different stats and and do trade-off calculations and stuff just jack up your element and go all right that's step two if you if you have that unlocked step three how do we get more element so you might be thinking well let's just get element up element attack up and we're done right well that's a starting point you're going to get 20 percent more dragon attack plus an extra four so that's 20 percent of your base dragon attack which is really nice so you definitely need this maxed out but there are other ways to get element attack power and this is where the really clever stuff comes in there's a skill called dragon conversion this skill is one of the most complicated skills in the game to understand but it's one of the easiest skills to use because you just set it and forget it all right you just don't have to worry about it once you get it set up now what dragon conversion does so when you're using the red scroll what it's going to do is take all your elemental resistances and convert them to an elemental attack power. So it's gonna boost my dragon attack even higher. So let's look at the details on this. Level three is what you want. You're gonna get 10 elemental resist to everything. So you're gonna get 50 element resistance points just by getting this up to level three. And those 50 points will be converted into element attack power when you swap to the red scroll. Pretty simple, right? It's not a one-to-one -one conversion. It doesn't convert 50 points of resist into 50 points of element attack power. If it did that, 
this there'd be like one shot kills in this game and we don't want that so <laughs> it's different for each weapon type and so the exact formula is still in dispute the details of the form the exact formula don't matter we can crunch that in a spreadsheet if you want to but suffice it to say that it's somewhere between a four to one and a five to one conversion rate so 50 points of resist is going to convert down to something like 10 more element attack power doesn't sound like a lot does it remember your ultra file damage modifier is double digit modifier so it's like a 10x or 12x something like that so even just 10 extra dragon damage is going to end up doing a lot more damage per file but 10 is not all we're here for right if this skill if we just re, we're, if we were just using this skill for uh 10 resistance to all we probably wouldn't we'd probably find other ways to do it but there is another skill in the game that synergizes with dragon conversion in a huge way and that's called furious and so when when furious was introduced into the game people couldn't figure out how to take advantage of it and dragon conversion wasn't in the game yet it was just furious and so people thought oh we can there's a trick we can use to get infinite stamina that you know maybe we can take advantage of this maybe it's cool maybe we'll use it for elemental charge blade or something and some people did that but it kind of disappeared from usage and so but it's found a new home shall we say because look what furious is doing for you when you're on the red scroll you get all resistances plus 20. now you might think oh that's not going to work with dragon conversion because when you switch to red you lose all your resistances but well here's what happens when you switch to red the dragon the furious is going to activate first and it's going to give you plus 20 to all resistances so that's going to give you a hundred more resistance points and then the dragon conversion activates and it takes those hundred plus the 50 that dragon conversion is giving you it's taking that 150 element resist points and converting it to element attack power and so roughly five to one it's going to give you approximately 30 more element attack that's insane that is insane so these two skills alone boost your elemental file damage to a ridiculous degree and so if you just ran those two you do great damage you would do excellent damage but we've got more tricks up our sleeve take a look at this i made a video about the importance of defense boost it's an extremely important part of this build because look what defense boost level seven does all elemental resistance is plus five so that's another 25 total points of resist that's going to get converted into element attack power pretty nice on top of that it sends your defense to an insane level plus 10 percent and an additional 35 my builds are typically 1200 defense and i'm not even trying how else do we do this how else can we raise our elemental attack power well we're talking about resistances right i told you these level four slots would come in handy didn't i the more level four slots you have the more of these you can put in the game let's take a look at this resistances you get a level three fire resist from a level four decoration slot one level four decoration will give you 20 more resist and look at the defense boost too insane so there's 20 more resist to convert water res ice res thunder res dragon res fire res this build has plus 20 to every single resistance look at that i've maxed them all out and incidentally it's another 50 defense <laughs> insane all right so just to recap we've got dragon conversion which is the the workhorse skill this is going to take all our resistances and convert them to element attack and so it's also going to give us 
plus 50 elemental resistances. Furious is going to give us another 100. So we're up to 150 elemental resistance. And then we get 5 times 20. We're at 250 elemental resistance points. That's going to convert approximately, again, approximately 5 to 1. That's an additional 50 element attack power. And so when you start out with 55 or so, whatever the original was, and you augment it up with, with another 53, you're at 100 and something. And then from the dragon conversion, you're getting another 50 on top of that. We're at 185. So I don't have the exact formula right now, um, but you can see how we started with something less than 60 and we got it up to 185. All right, we can break down the specific numbers in a spreadsheet. It's not that important right now. It's insane. It really is insane. If you want to see what your resistances are, because see, you're on red scroll when you're walking around town. And there's no way to look at your blue scroll. So the other thing Dragon Conversion does is it, it just takes those resistances, uses them, converts them to element, and then sets all your resistances to zero. So you can't really tell what your resistances are just walking around town. So you want to see what your resistances are. You got to go to the training area, swap to blue scroll. This is where you can keep track of how high your resistances have been set. There it is. So all those positive numbers are going to get converted. Pretty cool. Now, it's not going to be just those numbers, okay? Because the furious resistances have not been added yet. So this is an important point here. When you are looking at these blue scroll resists, the furious plus 20 has not been added to those numbers. Now, let's say we add plus 20 to all those numbers. Well, they max out at 50, don't they? You can't get up to 58 points. That extra eight points is wasted. It's not going to convert. It's only going to convert a maximum of 50. So you're going to get plus 20 to all those, but you can see my water and my thunder are a little too high on this build. Ideally, I would get them to 30 and use any extra slots for other things, but kind of lazy, right? Plus, I like that extra defense boost uh, from the resistance skills. But you can see ice is right, almost perfect. So fire res is a little low, dragon res is a lot low, and water and thunder are overdone. So if I can somehow step those back and recapture some slots, I could optimize this even further. So your target here is getting your resistances as close to 30 as you can. Now there are other ways to do that. You know, let's look at my gear. I can re-augment this. You know, I don't need that recovery speed. I can re-augment this for the plus one slot and plus resists, okay? Or I could sacrifice some of that thunder and water resist and get a better augment and it won't negatively impact my final damage primordial not even augmented right so maybe i could trade some of those water and thunder resists for a nice augment here this one's not even augmented again so i've got some improvement i can make to this build i can step down that water and thunder again because i have too much to convert i'm throwing it away you know, if you max out to 50, anything over 50 gets thrown away. Augment here, not going to change this augment. I got that one point of dragon conversion. This is key to <laughs> my build. And also, you see that dragon res negative 7. Also, why my dragon res is so low. And then down here, another point of dragon conversion key to my build. And you can see I've already sacrificed a little bit of water res in getting that augment. Crit boost is irrelevant, so you can augment that right off the piece. No big deal. Yeah. So there it is. I can, I have some room to work here to, to improve this and make it even more efficient. So where does that leave us? I'm still not maxed out on these, right? Ideally, I'd have everything at minimum of 30 so I can maximize my dragon conversion. I want to get that 50 times 5. I want to get that 250 points converted over. How do we do that? There's one more way 
to boost our resistances. And that's our food skills. Yeah, I know Dango bird caller is my favorite, but I will sacrifice it and I will collect the birds one at a time instead of 10 at a time, instead of two, instead of two at a time so that I can get these resists up. I need dragon resistance in a bad way and I need a little bit of fire and that's all I need. So I need six points of fire res and I need 17 points of dragon res. Let's see if our food skills can give us that. So we're looking at dragon res plus 20. So we can max that out and we just need a little bit of fire. And if I did another one, it would be a waste. So I can just go put whatever I want on. I'm going to get my eight points of fire. I'm going to get more than 17 points of dragon. And at this point, it just doesn't matter what I pick. Now, alternatively, you know, if I wanted to do my bird collar and then my dragon, get 15 dragon and then eight fire, I could still get my bird collar. I wouldn't get all the dragon that I need, but I'd still get my bird collar. So I can do this for sure. Let's see what this does for us. And we'll have to go back to the training area, go to blue. And there we are. We're just two points shy of full conversion. And yeah, we're throwing away a lot. We're throwing away 13 points of thunder, eight points of water, two fire and one ice. So if I could tweak those numbers somehow, and probably through the augment system to get something in return for them. Yeah, definitely. Could we do it through skills? If I have too much thunder, let's say I have 13 extra thunder. Well, maybe I do it through the skills. I don't need level three thunder, right? 13 extra. I could just do thunder res one and I'd be close to 30 and maybe boost it just one more point through an augment. So I can play around with it there. And Thunder Res 1 is a single slot. So if I had single slots and I didn't have level four slots, or if I could augment in a single slot, then I'd free up a level four slot for something else. So there's a lot of different ways you can play around with this. The bottom line is you want those blue scroll resists to be 30 over here in the training area. When you've got your dragon conversion level three on your set and your furious level three on your set those are the numbers you're shooting for so you gotta you gotta always be checking these in the training area to see how closely you can get those to 30. not below 30 and as close to 30 as you can above and and as little extra above 30 as possible does it matter in the grand scheme of things if you're throwing away those points? No, it doesn't. Okay, that Thunder Res 43 doesn't do anything wrong. It doesn't do anything harmful to me. But what it does say is there might be a way where you can squeeze out a little bit more optimization by trading off those extra resistance points for either more slots or more armor skills in some fashion. Don't worry if they're all over. That's not going to negatively impact you. It's it just a sign that you might be able to squeeze out some more optimization from your build. And as you can see, I can do a lot more with my build. So let's take a look at the rest of the build. First of all, where's the dragon conversion coming from? How do you get this? You got to have your Crimson Valstrax Epic opened up and you will get three points of dragon conversion from various pieces of this. Let's take a look. The helm the chest, and the waist. Now, you can use those three pieces or you can do what I did. You can actually augment dragon conversion on a piece of gear. And that's what I have. My primordial legs augmented with one point of dragon conversion. And this is cool. I got an extra point of dragon conversion on the Valstrax coil. So I can use four pieces of primordial and just one piece of Valstrax instead of three pieces of Valstrax. Pretty cool. Now, what's the importance of Primordial? Primordial has Blood Rite, Blood Awakening, Burst, and Part Breaker. Those ones are important. Crit Boost is completely irrelevant. You can augment that right off. So how do these skills benefit you in this build? Step one, Blood Awakening. What does Blood Awakening do? Well, it doesn't tell you here in the description. Gradually bolsters your attacks for a certain period of time, depending on how much health you regain when landing attacks. This will boost your attack power, which we don't care about. 
but it'll also boost your element attack power. Yeah, you can get your element attack power uh, 30 points higher with Blood Awakening for a large portion of the quest. Now, how do you do that? That's where Blood Rite and Part Breaker come in. You break parts very easily, and then you start leeching life, and that activates the Blood Awakening. And the reason why these synergize with this playstyle so well is because of the insane amount of damage you do with every ultra. Let's say you do 5,000 points of damage with an ultra. You're going to recover most of your health with one ultra. It, th it, seriously, that's how good it is. After you break that part, you will start recovering health at an insane rate. Coupled with the defense bonuses you get on this build and it's just phenomenal your survivability is phenomenal phenomenal your survivability is phenomenal part breaker and blood right will trigger your blood awakening and give you 30 more element attack power and that's that much more file damage that's what i'm getting at two to three two to four hundred more points of file damage per file it's insane and the burst does even more, right? The burst increases your element attack by, by that much more. And so you're doing a lot of attacks with this. You really are. Um, you'll often see the first files hit at a certain number and the other, and the, the last one or two files hit at an even higher rate. That's why you want primordial on this build as much primordial as you can get. So if you can augment dragon conversion onto your primordial gear, you are golden. You are absolutely golden. So that's what I've done. I got a point there. I didn't get it, three points of dragon conversion on my primordial. I could. Maybe I augment the mail and the the gloves and get dragon conversion on those two. I wouldn't want to sacrifice some of the things on here, though. So I wouldn't want to lose skills off of the primordial. Um, the greaves, it was okay because what did I lose? Something that's irrelevant. So you got to be careful. Don't lose the stuff that's important to you. So that's how I chose to make my dragon conversion build. Mostly primordial, one piece of Valstrax, couple good augments. Now, where does the Furious come from? A lot of people will augment. Can you augment Furious onto gear? Um, what I've done is I came across a talisman that to most people would be garbage. Furious 3. Kashala Blessing and a 3 1 1 slots. It's a rare 9. It's not even a rare 10. So a lot of people look at that and they go, eh, Furious, what the hell's that? I don't care about that. And it's not a 2 2 2 and Kashala Blessing. Well, that's just a one, you know, a level one skill anyway. Who cares? Um, Furious 3 Talisman, if you see one of those, I don't care what it looks like. Keep it. All right. Furious is that good. So yeah, this is just something that was sitting around in my box. Didn't have any use for it until I decided to try out one of these builds. And then I saw, oh, that is just absolutely amazing. So there it is. The Furious is, is critical to this build. Uh, the Dragon Conversion is critical. I would say if you don't have access to the Blood Awakening, that's okay. I've done this build without the Blood Awakening and still have done insane damage. I have a video all about it. My Charge Blade build. Uh, it doesn't use the Blood Awakening, and I'm still doing insane damage. But it does add that extra 30 for a, a very large portion of the quest. So pretty cool. And I loved having the Part Breaker and the Blood Rite. You don't have to heal. It's just insane. And the Part Breaker means more staggers, of course. So very cool. So what I suggest you do is take some of these key skills, put them in your set builder, or, you know, you can just play around if you like to try to build these things yourselves. The critical things you're looking for are going to be the Furious and the Dragon Conversion. And you're going to want to get your element attack up, whatever charge blade you're using, get that maxed out. And from there, just start layering in resistance skills and defense boost. Because again, that defense boost gives you elemental resistances. Level 7 defense boost is going to give you 25 resistance points and each maxed out Element resistance skill will give you 20. So defense is 25 resistance points. 
and uh, fire resist for example is only 20 resistance points that are going to get converted so i would start with a defense boost seven it's going to be your biggest payoff and amazing defense boost what else do i have since it's charge blade embolden it's going to give you the blocking it's going to give you some dodging which does help out and it's going to give you more defense again tons of defense you may decide you want guard five on yours and i have no guard on this build because i uh, modified it to fight an AR 300 uh, Raytheon as well as the special Raytheon. And so the guard isn't that important, but I can slot the guard back in to this as needed. So if I was fighting a different monster that was weak to dragon, I want to get some points of guard back in. I'm not sure which one I swapped it out for, but it's just a couple decos to boost it up to five. It's pretty nice. So there's definitely some flexibility in the way I've put this together. Um, I put some defiance on so I could didn't have to block the roars and I could just keep attacking. Not necessary for most scenarios. Uh, this is just a customization to fight that Raytheon. I like Rapid Morph. You may not like it and you may like the timing of your morphing without the Rapid Morph. If that's the case, don't put it on the build. The Morph Attack damage is irrelevant. And if you're okay with the morph speed as it is, don't worry about it. Just don't use it. That will free up a level four and a level two slot to get that. Yeah, you don't have to copy this the exact same way I have. I managed to get element exploit on here. And so this will boost your elemental file damage as well. If the weakness is high enough, and usually it's going to be. That's the whole point of this build. Fight the monsters. They have really good elemental weak spots and exploit that. So if you can squeeze this in, go for it. Now, if we're looking at a build for a different element, don't forget the elder blessing skills. Okay, let's take a look at these. So the Kashala blessing. When you're building for your water or your ice charge blade, Get the Kashala Blessing level two. It's going to boost your element attack by 10%. Amazing. Uh, if you're building for fire, make sure you get the Teostra Blessing level two. So to get the thunder, you need to do a crazy build that I am not, that I'm not doing. Storm Soul. You can get your thunder and dragon attack plus 15% with this, but it requires you to get three points of Storm Soul. So if you can work this into a build, you're a better builder than I am. Can you augment Storm Soul? No. Can you find it on a talisman? No. You're going to need three pieces of Narwa to build this. How are you going to do that? Good luck to you. The slots are not great. I'm not good enough to do it. I'll tell you that right now. So I forego the thunder and dragon boost. Uh, but the fire, water, and ice are so easy to get. It's two level one slots that you need or you can just augment them on they're real easy augments to get and you get that extra 10 percent element attack power so pretty cool in fact i still need to add those to my other builds i've got dragon is the the one that's really decked out um i've got the water thunder fire and ice but i don't think i have kushala on my ice version so i'm still updating this one i got one point so we got to boost that with another point so I'll definitely work on that. And since these share the same equipment, it might be difficult to try to augment the skill directly onto it. So what I'd be looking to do is, since I have two unaugmented pieces, I'd be looking to get single slots. So I'd like to have a single slot here and a single slot here. And I could probably trade some of those extra resist to get that. And then I can just slot in my Kishala Blessing or my Teostra Blessing as needed pretty cool. So that's my build. You can build a dragon conversion build without all of this primordial stuff, and it is still highly effective. I have done that. This is just my, this is my primordial version of it, which just takes it to the next level. So don't worry about ha trying to get everything that I have on here. Just focus on those core skills, the furious, the dragon conversion, and the element resist boosting skills and you're going to be in a really good place to get started with this play style so that that's the build 
uh, that's how it works. That's how Dragon Conversion works now. How do you use it? We're going to go into a quest and talk about that in the next episode. We can do the spreadsheet in another video. We can crunch the exact numbers for you guys who love that kind of stuff. This is enough information to get people going in the right direction. The other stuff's nice to know for the spreadsheet nerds. Sometimes I'm a spreadsheet nerd. Yeah, you saw everyone see my defense video, right? Sometimes I sometimes I do that kind of stuff. Uh, we're going to do some gameplay in the next episode of this so I can show you the ultras and some of the ways you can get them off and some openings on certain monsters. It's gonna be cool. Subscribe to our channel, like the video, leave a comment, tell me if you want to watch the spreadsheet video, I will make it. Uh, you don't have to watch it though, just let me know what you think about that idea. And check out my Patreon. I have one tier of subscription over there, it's $1.25, half a cup of coffee, once a month, helps me continue to make these videos for you guys. And it's basically couch cushion money for you. Well, if it isn't couch cushion money for you, don't worry about it. Keep your dollar twenty five. <laughs> but if you do have an extra twenty bucks lying around, come on over. I appreciate everything you guys do for me. See you in the next one. Now go hit those spreadsheets.